Okay, hello everyone, my name is uh, Fabio. Um, this is uh, something I've been working on with Tim, who's here, and Tobias and Robert Hitfeld. Uh, I'll be talking about small dog style development for Python and Ruby. So let's uh, start, with, start this off with a comparison um, of IDE architectures. So on the left you have the common approach. Uh, let's say Eclipse for instance. Uh, Eclipse is running and uh, when you execute a program, you run that in a sub-process and Eclipse can interact with that process through a runtime API. And uh, this way you can, for instance, inspect stacks, restart frames and things like that. Um, uh, when you operate on objects, you usually get like proxy objects that you can operate on and things like that. So you're always restricted to what the runtime API allows you to do. Uh, on the right side, uh, you have the Smalltalk uh, small approach, for instance. Everything is, well, the, the IDE is contained in the same process. So all of a sudden, um, the IDE has a direct access to, to the objects and can you know, basically decide um, yeah, how to how to um, yeah, or how to proceed in a program. Um, here's our approach. So we combined multiple interpreters uh, via interpreter com uh, composition. Uh, on the right, you see the virtual machine. Um, there's the Smalltalk interpreter loop, and there's a Python interpreter loop, for instance. Uh, on the left, you see the stuff that's in the image. So in the image, we have a Python object. Um, which uh, all objects that I uh, well, well this object is used to expose uh, all objects that are from the foreign language, so from Python for instance. And there also is a Python class which is just a helper class which communicates with our Python plugin primitives. And we have a debugger which inherits from the Smalltalk debugger that we can use to uh, you know, debug Python. And how does that work on the right? Well, I mean, I can um, yeah, start a new Python process that is actually a, a stacklet or a lightweight thread. And then the Smalltalk loop is being interrupted and the Python loop starts. And at the number of bytecodes, um, the, py the Python bytecode loop yields, yields back to the Smalltalk bytecode loop. And this way we can interact with the programming environment while the Python process is running. And the Smalltalk scheduler decides when to run, when to run more as, uh, Python bytecodes. And yeah, this is how the frames are being structured. So on the bottom, you would have uh, squeak as a Smalltalk dialect, uh, squeak frames, and then at some point the uh, programmer decides to evaluate Python, and that basically triggers uh, a switch to the Python interpreter loop and here we have different Python frames and uh, when the uh, process yields we put a fake frame, a fake Smalltalk frame on top and the next time the Smalltalk scheduler decides to uh, yeah, uh, continue with uh, Python it will see, it will use that re resume frame and then the Python execution starts again and this is basically how we how we have the um, yes scheduling part done. Now, also something that I forgot. Um, yeah, usually you have like an operating system and memory that um, that is used to do in um, inter-process communication. Here we use Smalltalk as our basically operating system, which already provides objects and inheritance and things like that. So we are hosting all of. Uh, all of our foreign language in Smalltalk. And by foreign language, I always mean Python or Ruby or some other language. Something that we had to deal with uh, when we came up with this was unknown exception detection, which is quite hard in Python because Python is not designed to do all of this. In Python, when you get an exception, you can inspect it and then you're done. You can't resume anything, you can't continue and edit or something like that. So um, here, whenever we raise an exception, we have to uh, inspect the current frame for a corresponding accept block, which means this accept block has to handle this exception. Um, and we do this for all parent frames and try to detect whether this exception will be caught or not because otherwise the stack is unrolled and we can't do anything anymore and in Smalltalk we want to see the 
the full stack in the debugger. Um, and yeah, it comes with some limitations. Of course, there's performance overheads. Um, but that's usually not, not a big problem because you don't have too many frames and usually an accept block isn't too far away from where the exception is raised. And if we have to go through the whole frames and didn't find anything, then this is already like the debugging session. And this means uh, yeah, time, time is, is fine uh, doing things in this case. Um, also, there are some Python built-ins that can mask exceptions. For instance, if, there's, uh, if you use get attribute and uh, use the default parameter, and there's an uh, attribute error in your exception or in your program, then get attra will mask that and will give you the uh, default value. So we also have to make sure that this works. And of course, there's a lot of different try and catch cases um, and, you know, possible in Python. So for instance, there's a lot of meta programming that you can use to uh, define a try and catch block and things like that. And it's really, really hard to uh, yeah, find out whether an exception is, uh, will be caught or not. In order to display all of this in the Smalltalk debugger, we have to somehow come up with uh, yeah, new stack frames. Uh, on the left, we see what we actually do in the Smalltalk world. We have a Python context, which is a fake um, uh, method context in Smalltalk and they're all linking to the corresponding Python frame. So this way we can open the debugger and then consult that object, that Python context, and ask it about information that is stored in the real Python frame. Uh, something that I did not mention but is quite important, um, we're using PyPy and the R, uh, R Python toolchain um, and ask week for the um, small talk part. I think it's time to demo all of this. So I have a small talk environment here, and this is my small talk workspace. And uh, yeah, I can basically work with this as usual. So when I inspect 42, I get a small integer. I can change the programming language. So now I have a Python workspace. And when I inspect 42, I now get a Python integer. You may notice there also is Ruby, because um, we have integrated Topaz. And here we get a Ruby fix now. OK. So uh, in, in Smalltalk, you would write something like this, or you could do self as float. And then you get the uh, um, yeah, float value for this. In Python, you would call, for example, this. So we have different syntax, but it's the same tool. So we're reusing the inspector. We are also reusing the workspace. I have some more examples here to show. Um, here's a more powerful library that I found on the internet from some machine learning. Um, a library called Pattern, and I can uh, yeah, print all of this. It returns none because I actually executed code and not evaluated code. Um, and now that I've done this, I can I can print the S or I can inspect the S, which now is a datasheet object in Python, and I'll see all the different functions that are defined on this object. Uh, also, for instance, pop. Yep. So pop is a bound method in this case, and uh, the representation of this data sheet already is this list here. And uh, in here, I can call pop, and then you'll see I get the the result is one of is the last uh, entry, and then the object changes line. So I can I can use that to yeah, do live inspection on Python objects. Another example that I'd like to show is this. Uh, here's a function, sorry that it's, it's a little bit small, but yeah, this is a function, uh, really stupid implementation of uh, average. And when I call this with an empty list, I get a debugger, of course. And uh, this is the Python frame, it has a little Python icon here, 
and uh, it, it tells me this is a zero division error. And so, you know, we don't have much time, so I'll just fix it, fix it in a stupid way. I changed it to zero, and when I press continue, it will print something, but it doesn't print it in the image, it prints it to my console. So here's the zero. I actually restarted, sorry, you can't see that, it's just a zero in my terminal. So, um, yeah, I can, I can restart frames and, and have the Smalltalk style experience with Python. In, in C Python, you wouldn't be able to even restart a frame. I can, I can overwrite a frame and, and restart that. And because performance is always important, um, I had the idea, uh, well, I found out about this, this benchmark for, for Ruby. Uh, it's a nest emulator. And I figured, OK, what would happen if I run this in my in, in my uh, Smalltalk environment and Topaz, um, thing is, this uses SDL, and so does our virtual machine. So I wasn't quite sure what would actually happen. So uh, here I have a Smalltalk uh, statement which uh, you know, creates and starts a process, a Smalltalk level process, but it evaluates Ruby, and I've turned exception handling off. Uh, and when I do this now, I'll see on my command line, here are some chimps that have been installed, and then it takes some time uh, because it's booting up. And eventually, I get a little window. SDL is opening up a new window, and then, okay, FPS is already there. Cool, and here's my NES emulator booting up some, some uh, ROM. Uh, it's not that fast, it's one frame per second, <laughs> but I can still interact with my Smalltalk environment. It's running in the same process, right? And uh, what I can also do is I can do a user interrupt. Here we go. So I've interrupted the process, the Ruby process, and now I see what the uh, Ruby process is up to at the moment. And this takes some time because we, yeah, the syntax highlighting is not that fast, especially not for a file this big. We're actually using pigments, a Python library, to do all the syntax highlighting. So we're using the integration uh, yeah, um, or, already. Um, and here I can, I can see what this thing is up to. It's currently in the game loop, of course. And uh, yeah, lots of Ruby code that I can, that I can uh, work with. And when I press, well now this thing doesn't do anything because the debugger is open, I can inspect the process. <coughs> of course, on the, on the uh, yeah, here on the bottom, there's the actual uh, evaluation frames and my do it should be down here. Yeah, here's my do it. That's the do it that I did. When I press uh, proceed, my application will, will continue. So eventually you should see something flickering or something change, but it is running. And I can, of course, interrupt it again if I want to. Yeah, there you go, something changed. Cool. So um, for future work, uh, we are, um, yeah, the next thing that we want to do is maybe uh, add the ability to call Smalltalk from within Python or Ruby, so that we could use a Smalltalk environment to persist objects and expose them using a Python library, for instance. And this also is interesting because then, all of a sudden, in a debugger, we can get uh, mixed stack frames, for instance, Smalltalk, Python, and Smalltalk, Ruby. So that, that would be interesting to see. Then we'd like to adapt more Smalltalk tools. There already is a system browser integration that I unfortunately am not able to show because of the time restrictions. And uh, yeah, we want to integrate more interpreters, maybe also some of uh, yeah, some for programming languages with different paradigms, for instance, Prolog or SQL. Uh, and yeah, of course, performance. We haven't worked on performance at all. Uh, we, we are just happy that it works. <laughs> Okay, so I'm happy to take any feedback, add this to my list. Uh, I've been working on this as part of my uh, master thesis. I'll be writing this up soon, so happy to take all the feedback. Questions? So can you um, intermix objects from different languages within the same computer? 
Um, Mike, can you add your small dog 42 to the Python 42 and get the right answer? Yes, I can. I can interact with uh, with those. Let me fire this up again. So that's based on the language integration. <coughs> Yes. Yes. So there is, we have a mapping for Python syntax in Smalltalk. So this is the Smalltalk. Uh, this is a Smalltalk workspace. So and I have here's a shortcut for Python built-ins, and here's the Python built-ins module. So and on the in the module there's the type string, and I could I could call that uh, with maybe foo, and then I get a Python string. And I can basically use that to reuse any Python library in my Smalltalk application. And so can I with, um, with uh, well, any it's Ruby. It's not quite the same thing. Uh, what I'm talking about is you know, handing uh, an object defined in one language to a library that that's, that's yes. another and having it. Well, I, ca thing. I caught this with the Smalltalk write stream, right? Okay. The virtual machine already converted it. And this gives me a Python, a Python string. You see, this is a Python string, and I can ask this to give me a Smalltalk object instead, and now I have a Smalltalk byte string. Okay. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I think so. So, okay. is there in, uh, have you written basically things to map like this as Smalltalk? What's that actually doing? Okay, that's a primitive from the virtual machine, and it tries to uh, convert uh, the object, the Python object, to Smalltalk, and that only works for. Um, uh, primitive option at the moment. Yes. So uh, let me show you the syntax highlighting thing. So here's the text styler, and the highlighting works exactly like this. So here's the uh, pigments highlight function, and that we call with Python. And in the end, we, are, we say as small talk, and then yeah, this gives us an HTML string, and then we convert this to text. And um, the objects, let me see, the Python object uh, overrides methods such as print on, for instance. This is the print on method. Whenever I print something, I see Python blah. This is the Python blah. Uh, it calls str the string operation on the object. And this way, we were able to bridge between Smalltalk and, and Python. And this is the way the tools can be adapted. This is why the tools work. I missed something. But can you explain again uh, how you uh, construct uh, small talk subframes which correspond to Python subframes? Because if, if there are multiple Python frames, Python frames, uh, there, there are also multiple small talk frames corresponding to each other. Right? How, how do you construct? Well, I, currently, it's it's just on top of the small talk frames. So we we put fake small talk frames on top, and each of these frames represent. A, a real Python or Ruby frame. So whenever a Python Python method calls another Python function, yes. uh, does does a small talk VM traps that that call and um, no, it's just it's just running and then at some point the bytecode loop decides to yield back to Smalltalk mm -hmm. and then the Smalltalk environment, if there's for instance a user interrupt. We say, okay, the scheduler doesn't pick you again. I'll ask for your uh, top frame instead, and then it builds up this chain, uh, connects the frames again, and opens the debugger. So conversion is is, is performed on demand. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's only when you're debugging. Only when I'm debugging. Ah, yes. Yeah. Doesn't happen all the time. So what do you think? Uh, how, how much you can improve performance? Uh, what, are, what are the tricks that uh, you think will have to be uh, used to improve performance? Yeah, so currently we are switching between stacklets, uh, and I'm not sure how well the JIT can handle this. Um, also, um, I haven't tweaked the parameters at all, how many bytecodes can run. I can adjust the, the parameter in, in PyPy, I can't in Topaz, but uh, I'm not sure how, how fast we can we can get this. Well, it already is faster than, because we're using PyPy. This already is faster than C Python in lots of cases. So uh, when you usually use C Python uh, and you would use this instead, it will be the same speed or even a little bit faster. But you get a whole programming environment for free. It seems that the 
think I saw benchmark results of carrot on two paths, and they look much better than one yes. panel or a half frame per second. Yes, that's and the reason is that you have that interactive uh, switch. Yes, okay. yes. So uh, I had a version where I turned off the switching part, so it would just stay in the two pass loop, and then you get the 60 frames per second. Yeah. So th this is totally something that you can adjust, uh, or that you that you might be able to. Um, yeah, change. Also, I, we had this idea that you could um, yeah, plug in the ASPIC VM instead of Python or Ruby on your terminal, and then you run your application at full speed all the time, except there is an exception, and then we open up the Smalltalk environment and the debugger. So this way you would always run at full speed, except there is an unhandled exception. So. Okay. You have this stack blitz you were saying? Yes. Which is how you switch between the two lines. Yes. So that's going to get in the way of the trace of the big stuff. Yes. Because the, what you care about here is cross language performance. Right? Yes. And if there's a scheduler with a stack bit in the way, then the, you won't get cross language um, in line. Yeah, exactly. So you, you need to have to have a Yes. So maybe there's another way to do this, uh, but I'm not sure yet. Thing is, the um, yeah, um, the Python interpreter uh, and the Ruby interpreter are stackful, so there are no continuations whatsoever that I could that I could use. So currently we're just yeah stopping a thread and then return to it later. So that is performance really a big problem. I mean. You did that to use a small of tools, so do you have full completion for Python? Or um, not yet, but I have syntax editing for all the languages. <laughs> yeah, I I could, I guess. Yeah. One small more question. Could you already set up? Yeah, I, I sort of, it's a very general question, I guess. Yes. Do you see it sort of being more of a uh, cross language development uh, environment in the future, or more of a so just a refined, verbose uh, programming environment for one of the languages, mm -hmm. just sort of idealism. So, there are many use cases for this, obviously. One would be education purposes, so you could use that to you know, teach someone to use Python, and then they can interactively explore objects. <laughs> Also, small talkers now can use any Python library, like machine learning libraries, which would also be interesting for the small talk community. Um, and also, well, since you can't really restart frames and do this kind of debugging in Python, maybe this is even uh, interesting for the Python. Well, I hope it's, it's interesting for the Python community. So eventually, I'll, I'll try to reach out to them and give them my, my environment and then see what they, what they think about this. Not sure yet. Okay. Thank you very much.